Hi, my name is Anna Grace Raddick. It's September 24th, 2016, Saturday. I'm in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. It's evening time. I just came from Durham, New Hampshire, the University of New Hampshire, to hear Maggie Hassan speak about her candidacy uh, for the New Hampshire Senate, as well as to listen to and possibly meet Senator Warren um, of Massachusetts. So the reason why I decided to basically um, go to meet, in particular, Senator Warren is because I'm running for the 9th Congressional District of Massachusetts. I got 2,443 signatures from local residents, and I did run for a state senate last year, and I think I received about 500 signatures then. And I did this so that I could speak to Congressman Keating and Senator Warren because I've called many, many times over the past four years and I haven't received any answer back. And so I actually wanted to bird dog them even at one of their events and no one would tell me when their events were. And I was getting the runaround for so long. I called up their Boston offices. I, I called up their DC offices many times. I have records of them because I was encouraged to by different people. And also I, um, I, I went to DC twice um, about two years ago, as well as in March of 2016 this year. And um, I, I did speak to Julia Frederick of Senator Warren's office and she was very nice. And I bumped into her, I actually went to the office. I was not invited, but she never followed up with me. So. Um, the reason why I wanted to talk with them is because I'm a victim of life insurance fraud alongside my ex-husband. I was told that I needed to marry a rich man and someone was going to kill my ex-husband and I needed to collect the money and that I would have 10 years left to live. I had signed a $1 million life insurance policy that I never paid into through MetLife and I found out that they do this a lot, including to military people veterans and police as well as they did it to a state senator in Nevada named Kathy Augustine and her husband who both signed million dollar life insurance policies I went to report it to the local state and federal police I was told there's nothing I could do that it's a woman's rights problem what I'm going through basically harassment and then I went to um, the U.S. Marshals, I was encouraged to go there, and I said, uh, I asked them about the witness protection that they have, and they told me that it was unsuitable for my situation, it's for criminal cases. So they told me that there was no way to help me because there's no law, so I went back and I said, I created a new ID program, I created a new law for you to help people like me, and they said, that's great, they liked it, and then they, they wished me good luck. Well, I haven't been able to meet Congressman Keating or Senator Warren about it. And today I went to meet Senator Warren and I was shocked because uh, she's billed as a kind person and she actually yelled at me and she had me, some people tell me to leave, even though I went to her peaceably and told her very briefly my, my issue and that I would like her to look at my bills that I wrote. She was very rude. In fact, in her speech, she was actually putting down Kelly Ayotte of New Hampshire. And I met Kelly Ayotte and I gave her a copy of my bills too. And you know what Kelly Ayotte did? She listened to me for about two to five minutes and she was very nice and she looked me in the eye and she said, thank you and I'll look over these. She, she never got back to me. She's a very busy person, but I trust that she did look at it. Well, Senator Warren, I never heard that she looked over them, although when I went to meet her today, she said that she was well aware of my case. And um, she didn't even give me a minute or two to speak to her. The reason why I'm making this video is because I am actually shocked at the way people in DC treat people. Not everyone treats people badly, but the ones that are billed as kind and good representatives are often not to the least among us. I do believe I represent the least among us. I am definitely a, a jilted and spurned person, a person who was taken advantage of and exploited. 
and I represent a lot of people who cannot speak up for themselves, people who have been killed for life insurance through MetLife. MetLife hires contracted killers to kill people in ways that are undetectable, that don't look like murder. So, in essence, I, I have to say that I, I'm really shocked and I feel that I used to be a social worker and I've never treated anyone like this. When I had a professional job working with clients who were either mentally ill or who were either mentally retarded or even homeless, because I worked in all those different demographics, as well as women and children who were very poor, I never ever treated anyone like that. And you should be ashamed of yourself, Senator Warren. You put down Kelly Ayotte, you know, she was a world nicer than you were, a world more kind. And I, I'm just shocked at the way I was treated and you yelled at me. I'm a woman that is in uh, pretty big trouble. I was told that someone would murder me by 2026. I tried to do the right thing and I tried to help people who cannot help themselves. I told law enforcement, I, all the way up to the federal level, they all seem to like the ideas that I have and you wouldn't even listen to me. I just, I know you do a lot of good things, but I think it's all for the camera because what was present between you and me, there was a camera. There was a camera there, and you just cared more what was on the camera than the person before you. Well, I just think it's I just think it's very wrong the way I've been treated by Congressman Keating's office and Senator Warren. I'm not going to say anyone's perfect, but I will also say that I did go to Senator Markey's office, and Senator Markey's office listened to me. I went into his office, and he had a human trafficking officer with me and after a year had passed I said would he be willing to take the bills on and he said or she said that he said not at this time but maybe in the future but probably not and I thanked them I thanked her and so that's all it really takes shuffling something under a rug and treating a victim like this is unacceptable if there is nothing that you can do about this organized crime incident, I understand. However, you could have looked over that ID program that would help other people in the future. And you didn't even do that. And if you did, I didn't hear about it. And I didn't even hear any feedback, what you thought about it. You're supposed to be my representative. I am a constituent. And I, I know that it's a hard job and I understand that. It's a very, very, very difficult job. But considering that there's a lot of people being murdered in covert ways by this industry that creates drugs, that forces women into prostitution, and which kills the best people in this country for life insurance. The best people in this country die for life insurance. Who do you think signs a policy? Someone who cares deeply about their family. So when somebody is a police officer and they think, well, I have a high risk occupation and they sign a a life insurance policy of five hundred thousand dollars maybe even a hundred and an organized crime gets that that information and they think we have to whack this guy that's like a little too much you know that is too much and the fact that nobody wants to look at this situation for what it is and fix the situation I know of people who are in the military and even veterans and police that have signed life insurance policies and they've been whacked off. And um, Senator Kathy Augustine, State Senator Kathy Augustine of Nevada, she had also been murdered alongside her, her husband for $1 million life insurance. These are people that served our country. And the multinational, the multinational life insurance industry, MetLife and all the others in Wall Street, they think they can get away with this and pick off people and pick off our best. And now I hear that, you know, people are being targeted, people who are doing drugs. By the way, it's easy to look down on people who do drugs, but people who do drugs are actually just a lot of times from very good families who are targeted, wrongly targeted. And it's not fair that anyone should target them to kill them for life insurance either. How about the life insurance industry? changing things around so that they can extract money if it's a money extraction problem without putting a body in the coffin.
So I just, I'm just completely, I'm completely sickened. I've actually read Senator Warren's book and I have also seen some of the things she's done and it seems that she does a lot of good things. But I feel that I've been really mistreated today and given absolutely no respect. And it doesn't make me upset for myself, my ego, but when I think of people who are actually in a worse situation than me, who don't have the courage to go up to a senator or a congressperson, who don't even have the wherewithal to organize their thoughts to try to help this situation, and they go up or they, they, they don't know what to do, and then they meet someone like, like that, sorry, but I think that's wrong. I am a Christian person and I think that that is wrong to treat people like that. If you take a vow to serve the country, if you take a vow to serve others, why should you, why, why would you want to treat someone like that? Especially someone who's so, in a way, desperate, in a desperate and bad situation. Because they're so low that it doesn't matter? Or it's not a good photo opportunity? Maybe you can't do anything. Well, why not just like be straightforward about what you can do and what you cannot do? Or give some feedback as to why it wouldn't work? It took a lot for me to get 2,443 signatures and 500 signatures to get on the congressional ballot as well as the state senate ballot. That took a lot. And um, just to get an appointment with my representatives. And I also wanted to tell you something. A long time ago, I'm not a perfect person, but I wanted to be a nun. And I actually met with some nuns recently who work with trafficking victims. And they wanted to know where my representatives were. And they said to me, it's their fault they're not meeting with you. But I will say, and I had said it before, I don't know if on this tape, that Senator Markey's office, I think, handled it very well. They gave me some constructive feedback. And I just feel like his office was a lot nicer. I don't really know his office. I don't really know what the underpinning, underpinnings of those office are. But I, you know, I just feel like there's a way to professionally deal with people who are in a, a bad situation. And there's a way not to. And I'm not a perfect person, but when I took on the role as a social worker, as opposed to other jobs I might have had, or even in my own personal life, I took it very seriously. And I knew that I was dealing with vulnerable people and that I needed to help these people and be good to them. Even if they yell at me, even if they don't mistreat me, I needed to be good to them. And I would imagine that, you know, working as a congressperson, you're dealing with a whole different subset of people people who are, you know, not in the situations that I saw. But I would think that you would make a promise to yourself to always be good to the vulnerable and the needy. And that's all I wanted to say. I know it's not a good idea to make this video because now Senator Warren and Congressman Keating will never meet with me. But I figure they're never going to meet with me anyway because it's a pride thing. I think the real reason why, um, I think the real reason why Senator Warren didn't want to meet with me is because to meet with me or to talk with me is to recognize that maybe the, hand, the situation was mishandled and that um, it was basically pride. And so I know that the pride would get deeper and deeper as I make this video, but all I can say is that if I do become Congresswoman, which I think will never happen because I don't have a dime to my name. I will not treat people like that. I will try my best not to. And no one's perfect, but I will definitely try so hard not to. And I'm going to make crime, uh, my anti-crime initiatives in law enforcement number one. No person should be victimized or hurt for no reason. And you know, if you work hard and you, you do good and you follow the Bible, there's no reason why you should be hurt or are targeted for any of these things. I mean, that's bringing religious, religion into it, but I strongly feel I have worked hard in this country and I have been a good citizen. I take care of myself, I take care of my loved ones, and I try to be good to my friends. And I don't think it's fair that I've been targeted like this. And that's why I'm fighting back. And by the way, that's my ex-husband. For someone to say that I need to marry a rich man and they're going to collect the insurance and then I have 10 years left to live. That is my ex-husband. And no one has that right to do that to my ex-husband. I was told that I was viewed as a whore and not a wife. I am a wife 
And I was raised to be a housewife, actually. I come from a long line of housewives. And for you guys to think that housewives are hookers, they're not hookers. There's a reason why someone becomes a housewife. And now I think you guys are really seeing why. It's because a woman that becomes a housewife actually would do anything for her husband. That was my ex-husband you guys did this to. And you people who had no right to do